Welcome to the Supplemental Test Security Training Module on School Test Security Plans. This supplemental training will include a walkthrough of the School Test Security Plan QuickBase application for LEA test coordinators. If you are viewing this and you are a non-public coordinator, please select the non-public coordinator walkthrough presentation as the walkthrough of the QuickBase application will be slightly different. As a reminder, in the 2021 ASI, as a reminder, in 2021, ASI has released six training modules that will serve as test security training this year. There are six required training modules. These modules are required for all LEA test coordinators, including those responsible for access and alternate access, MSAA, and PART. The modules follow the order of activities in the assessment coordination timeline. Upon the completion of all training modules, LEA test coordinators will need to complete a quiz and certification form verifying that they have viewed all content. A score of 80% or higher on the quiz will serve as the official attendance and completion of the 2021 test security training. This supplemental training module is not included in the six required trainings and will only cover the school test security plan process. If you have not viewed all of the required training modules listed here and have not taken the quiz, please do so at your earliest convenience. In this supplemental training module, we will cover the following. A school test security plan overview, school test security plan submission and approval process, and a walkthrough of the school test security plan quiz-based application. We'll talk about the school test security plan process. OSI requires every school that will administer a statewide assessment to complete and submit a school test security plan prior to the start of the school's testing window. The school test security plan serves as the official communication with OSI of the school's plan for administering statewide assessments. School plans must be submitted to OSI for final approval at least 15 days before the first day of testing. Each school test security plan must include the following information. Names and contact information for test coordinators and key test administration staff, a secure materials management plan, plans for school staff and authorized personnel to report irregularities in test administration and security, a plan for key school staff to, commit in, to conduct inquiries on reported test irregularities during test administration, affirmation that the school staff are aware and have access to the complete list of prohibitive actions as defined by the state, a plan for handling logistical technical communication issues as they arise during test administration, affirmation that the school has met a number of actions as required by the state, affirmation that test sessions and test administrators have been entered into Pearson Access Next, um, that's for part test plans only, a list of authorized personnel, and a detailed testing schedule. As a reminder, if your testing schedule changes or the list of authorized personnel changes, please update those attachments in your school test security plan. OSI reviews and approves all school test plans and provides technical assistance to schools whose plans need improvement prior to and during testing. Over the years, we've identified characteristics of strong and weak school test plans. Strong school test plans are plans that are clear and organized. The responses are thoughtful and tailored to the unique circumstances of the school. Strong test plans are also thorough and have complete sentences that are easily decipherable. Additionally, school test plans will only be approved when the following things are attached and complete. An authorized personnel list, school testing schedule, and for part, a complete SRPNP file that includes the test sessions, test administration location, accommodations, and test administrators. On the converse, plans that are returned for edits are the opposite. They may be disorganized and difficult to understand. They have incomplete or half responses, or responses full of shorthand or acronyms that are not clearly defined. We also return plans for revisions if the responses are generic and conflict with the circumstances of the school. 
Our intention is to approve test plans in their first iteration, but we will not hesitate to push back plans for revisions if answers are unclear, insufficient, or incomplete. There are a number of supports that OSCE provides to aid LEA and school test coordinators to complete the school test security plan. Those supports include a supplemental school test security plan module, which you are now viewing, school test plan instructions. This document provides step-by-step -step instructions on the entire approval and submission process. This document is located in the QuickBase application that we'll talk about in a moment. The school test security plan exemplar is a document that provides sample written responses for each question that we ask in the school test security plan. When reviewing this document, you will see the level of detail OSCE is looking for, sample responses, and important information and reminders for each question. This document is also located in the QuickBase application. Additionally, we also provide authorized personnel and test scheduling templates. And lastly, OSCE will offer office hours throughout the winter and early spring for LEAs in schools and non public to seek individual support. All school test plan support documents can be located at OSCE's Test Security and Incident Reports webpage located here. As a test security reminder, school test security plans must be submitted 15 business days before the first day of testing. OSCE's review period is typically five to 10 days. If the plan is submitted late or revisions are recon not reconciled within five days, the start of testing may be delayed. We understand that there may be challenges in sticking to the traditional timeline due to the rapidly changing landscape at schools and at the state. OSCE is prepared to work with schools and LEAs in order to get plans approved. Testing cannot begin until the school test security plan is approved by OSCE. If you have any questions about OSCE assessment policy or specific assessment programs, please feel free to reach out to the appropriate members of the OSCE assessment team. Now we will walk through a test security plan application. I'll be able to show you all of the things on your homepage and also walk you through the QuickBase form. So for an LEA test coordinator, once you log in to the application, this is what you will see. This is called your homepage. On the homepage, there are a number of helpful links, um, information, as well as reports that will assist you as you um, fill out your test plan. So the first thing you'll see here is our landing page message. Um, this message uh, right now has information on how to add a test security plan. But if there are ever times where OSCE needs to communicate um, new information, uh, you'll see it in this section here. It'll likely be in red or in bold or uh, some way that you'll know that there's new information. Um, there's also the contact information for Shannon Bell who manages this application and this process. The uh, next section here is the supplemental test security resources. So these uh, links are just helpful links that will help you through test security as well as this uh, test plan procedure. So the first link that you'll see here is the test security plan instruction. So as I mentioned in the PowerPoint, the instructional documents take you step by step, um, give you additional information on what um, each step looks like, what the approval process looks like, and what the revisions um, look like. It's very helpful for you to review this document as it will provide any um, information that's not presented in this presentation. The next link that you'll see is the test security plan exemplar. The exemplar is a PDF version of the actual test security plan form. It provides you with sample responses. It provides you with uh, tips and reminders and also lets you know the level of detail that OSCE is looking for in each of the questions. The next section is the test security plan incident report page. This page is uh, on OSCE's website. It provides all of the um, test security links um, and documents that we use throughout the year. 
It also um, provides an online web version of our incident report page so that uh, users can anonymously submit incident reports. Uh, the next link here is the OSCE Test Coordinator Resources page. This page um, is also on OSCE's website and it provides um, test coordinators with links to other OSCE trainings and also the test administration manual for each of our assessments. The last section here is how you submit a new test plan. We'll come back to this, but first I want to talk about all of our other things on the page. The next thing that you'll see on the page is the My School Plans. Um, report. This report will show every school within an LEA's um, test plans that have been submitted, started, or approved by OSCE. If you see here, um, this particular test user has one test plan in draft and one test plan that's been approved. If you are an LEA that has multiple schools, you will see multiple schools here. If you are a single school LEA, you will likely only see one test plan, um, either in total, if, you, if your test plan is submitted for all assessments, or you'll see one test plan potentially for access, MSA, and parts, depending on what you choose to do at your school. Um, on these plans, there are two options. You can um, edit a plan, which would uh, you would click the pencil here if you want to go into a test plan. You can also view a plan if you just want to see kind of what's going on. The next section here is the LEA review and approval report. So for LEAs that have non-public schools um, associated with them, they will non-public will be instructed to start their own test security plans um, and submit them directly to OSCE. LEAs will not be required to review the plans or approve them, or they won't be required to approve them, um, but you will be able to see your non-public plans here. You'll be able to see the status, if it's been approved, if it's in revisions, if they've submitted, et cetera. And you'll also be able to see who the owner is and what the assessment is for. Uh, additionally, if your school, if your LEA decides that you want school coordinators to submit test plans for a review, you'll see those reports here. Most LEAs do not um, have school coordinators submit plans, but if you happen to want your school coordinators to submit plans that you would then have to review and approve and then submit to OSI, you'll see those reports here. The next group of reports here are directives um, for schools without. So this is a very important section. It will show you which uh, test plans um, by assessment that have not, that OSSI does not have any information for. So if you, OSSI will select what schools we think should be having access plans, MSAA plans and parts plans. And if your school has not submitted any um, plans in draft, you'll see them here. And lastly, at the bottom of the page, there's a historical approved school plan section. Um, this section, you'll be able to see all of your school plans that have been approved for previous years. It may be helpful for you to review these plans because you'll be able to see which responses have been already approved by OSI. And if you want to copy and paste them into your new test plan, you're more than welcome to do so. One note about these historical plans, while you can um, view them, we ask that you do not edit these plans as they will be used for historical purposes. Um, so we'll go back up to the top here. As I mentioned before, they, if you want to go into a plan that's already in draft status, you can do so here. But for the purposes of this training, we will open up a new test plan. When you open up a new test plan, this is what you will see. There are 13 sections in the test plan. Um, if you want to see what type of responses for each of the questions, please review the exemplar, but I'll just walk through kind of the functionality of the plan. So the first thing you'll need to do, um, step one, is to choose who is completing the test plan. This is important if you have school coordinators who are submitting the plan, make sure that you let them know to select the school test coordinator um, as their person who's in, uh, initially submitting this, because if you select school test coordinator, uh, we'll scroll down quickly to the bottom. You'll see that there's an LEA approver section. So when the school test coordinator is ready to submit for LEA coordinator, they'll get a note like this. And then you as the LEA will then have to go in and approve or submit revision. This will only show up if the uh, user is selected as the school coordinator. And that's the only difference between the school coordinator and the LEA coordinator form. 
because most schools uh, usually just have the LEA coordinator do this, we'll go through this process. And so it was that. Uh, the next section here uh, in the assessment is for you to choose your assessment. Um, this year, we are only assessing in access, alternate access, MSA, and park. So that's why you don't see uh, DLM or DC Science. So if, as you select and unselect, you'll see that there are certain questions that are only for certain assessments. LEAs are more than welcome to submit one test plan that answers all of the questions for all of the assessments, or they can select just one or two, whatever combination that they'd like. For the purpose of this walkthrough, we will select all of them so we can talk it about all of them together. In section number three, this is where you submit your start and end date. It's important that as soon as you know the start and end dates for your um, school, you select them because as you see here, once you select the start date, uh, the system will automatically calculate when your test plan is due to OSI. This is important for you so that you know, and it's also important for OSI because we have internal systems that will uh, remind you as your due date is coming due. So if you're not ready to answer any of your questions below, uh, other than your school, please go ahead and start a test plan, entering your start and end date, and uh, click save and close. That way we'll know um, when you're ready to test. So in section four, this is where you can select your school. You'll be able to type it in here, and it will select things for you, or you'll just be able to scroll. However you'd like to do it, you can do that. Um, for the purposes of this, we will select early childhood. And then, as you'll see below, there are a number of uh, contact information um, for the LEA and school test coordinators uh, for each assessment. And the reason why you see all of them here is because in section number two, we selected all of them. In addition to the LEA and school coordinators for each assessment, we also ask for special coordinate, special population um, coordinator information as well as the technology coordinator information. Section number five uh, are the, the first set of actual questions for the test plan. Um, actually, before we do that, let's just say that you wanted to start a, um, a test plan and come and edit it later. We'll do that first. So we'll just select our start and end date. And then when you're ready to, if all you want to put in is your school information, LEA information, start an end date, you can click save and close. Take you back to the homepage. Now you can see um, the new plan that we just started, which is in draft, which is the early childhood CCS. You'll, you'll be able to see what the assessments are, who started it, and the date that has been modified. Once you're ready to go back in, you can always click on the pencil, which is edit and it opens back up that test plan. Now we're in the test plan again, we'll go back to section number five. So in section number five, there are questions that ask um, about your secure materials management for both in-person and remote. Because we selected park above there, you will see a number of remote only questions that only talk about park. If for some reason your LEA or school um, is only doing in-person park and not remote, um, in this section, just put in A, um, in person only. This way, OSI will know that you are, while you are assessing parts, you're only doing in person. Please make sure that you put that information and don't leave it blank. Uh, in the, also, the, throughout the form, you'll also see conditional forms. So if you select yes, you'll have additional questions. If you select no, you won't. Um, section number six is asking about incident reports. Uh, please review the exemplar to um, get what we're looking for here. There are a number of drop downs that you can do. There are a number of drop downs, and then you'll also see conditionals. Section number seven is asking about um, your school's plan to investigate or inquire about issues that are happening during test administration. Um, there are, there's a remote question here that specifically asking for parts. Um, please answer that and review our exemplar if you are testing remotely. There's also other uh, conditionals here. Section number eight is just a list of all of our prohibitive actions. 
as listed um, in our Test Integrity Act. It also provides a space for you to put what your individual school or LEAs have as additional uh, prohibitive action. Section number nine uh, is a lengthy section that's asking for a bit longer responses for logistical concerns uh, regarding accommodations, communications, troubleshooting, et cetera. Um, there are a number of remote only part questions here, so please keep that in mind um, to answer or put in a if you're only testing in person. Section number 10 is uh, all of our assurances. So these are assurances that we have made as a state. We want to make sure that LEAs and schools are aware of um, before testing can begin. Because we selected park above, there are also two additional assurances that are only speaking specifically to actions in Pearson Access Net. Section number 11 uh, is where authorized personnel um, and test schedules need to be attached. You'll see that we have two templates here. You're more than welcome to download those templates, fill them out completely and attach them. You can also use whatever template or whatever document that you use as a LEA or school, just making sure that you have the information that is listed here. The last section is how you submit your test plans to OSI. Once your test plan is ready to be uh, submitted for OSI, there are instructions here that will tell you this, but um, the way that we communicate is through the status. So you'll be able to select submitted when you're ready to submit. You'll see a nice little note here. You'll press OK. And when you're ready, you can click Save and Close. You notice here there is an error code that comes up because the system requires that you answer all of these questions before you submit your test plan. So please make sure that all of the responses are completed and put in A if that's um, if that's appropriate for part um, and then submit. Because we can't submit now, uh, we won't go through that process. Other things that you'll see in this section, if you once you've submitted your test plan, OSI will review all of the questions and also review any attachments and actions in PAN if it's for a part plan, and we'll make a determination. Once OSI makes a determination, you'll receive an email from the system letting you know that OSI has made a determination. And you can also come back into the QuickBase application at any time and review as well. So OSI will do two, one, or, one of two things. Either OSI will say that the test plan needs revision. So you'll see the status here. It'll say needs revision. And then in this section, you'll be able, OSI will let you know what the exact section is that needs revision. We'll select who the person is. And we'll also provide you details on what specifically you need to change in your test plan. Um, once you reconcile all the revisions, you can simply click revisions complete, and then you change the status to revisions submitted. This is the only way that OSI will know that you're ready for your plan to be reviewed again. So please make sure that in addition to reconciling submissions, checking that revisions have been completed, that you change the status. Um, from that point, OSI will review again. If there are additional revisions, OSI will change it back, add more. Hopefully that is not the case. Um, and then finally, OSI, once it's ready to go, OSI will select OSI approved. That way you'll know that your test plan has been approved. You'll receive an email and you'll see section 13. So we'll go ahead and save it so that you can see what that looks like in your My School Plans report. So as you see, now you'll see the status is OSI approved for that test plan. We'll go back in one more time so that I can talk briefly about section number 13. So once your plan has been approved, there's not any additional action that you need to take on the plan um, before test administration. In section number 13, there is a place for my, uh, minor deviations. So if there are minor changes that aren't incidents that you'd like to um, keep a log of, you can simply enter in that information save it and close it, and the system will hold all of those in log format. The other times that you may come into the test plan during uh, test administration is if OSI asks for you to provide a plan to improve or fact-finding inquiry. Um, both of these documents would come as a result of an incident report. Either OSI will uh, identify that there may be an issue in your plan or you need to update your procedures, and then we'll ask for a plan to improve. You can download the template here, and attach it, 
or if you submit an incident report and OSCE determines that we need additional information before we can make a final determination, we'll ask for a fact finding. Again, you can download it here, upload the file, save and close. So that completes our walkthrough of the um, School Test Security Plan Quick Space application. If you have any questions um, regarding the application, how to submit it, or if you need access, please contact shannon.bell at dc.gov. Thank you so much, and hopefully we'll see you soon in the next few weeks.